Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the spline warp inside of Nuke. Hi, so how to use the spline warp? Well, first thing is press tab and then add a spline warp. And then how spline warp kind of works is it's almost it's like a it's like a kind of bendy mirror that warps whatever's behind it. So if I move my head that mirror will stay in the same spot. So the thing to do is to track that mirror to the thing that you want to warp. So I'll show you how I use it. So the first thing is you make a, an, a, the area that you want to kind of warp. So I'm gonna do this bit. Okay, and then you make an area outside of that that you don't want to warp or you kind of want to limit it to. So you add another curve and then I'm going to add another one up here like that, and that's going to be my containment area. And then to make that containment area, actually what I'm going to do is change the name of the spline. So I'm just going to call this one source. And I'm going to call this one wall. And then we press this button over here. So this one here, that contains the thing inside of here, hopefully. Okay, so now, what I'm going to do is translate the root of this. So at the moment, the root is, if I go to translate, it's translating from here. So what I want to do is track that to this eye <clears throat> so that as, as the footage updates, it will go with it. So I'm going to go and I'm just going to use a tracker, um, track, tracker. Where's the tracker? There it is. So go to my first frame, um, add a track. Let's set it up here because I, I blink. So I don't really want to have it there. So I'm actually, I'm going to just track my nose. Uh, um, there we go. So select those two. And the inside area is the area you want to track and the outside area is that where it might move frame to frame by frame. So I'm just going to select both of these and then hit track. Okay, now we have a track and I will go to settings, make that transform, make that a match move. And then it's, it's set to frame one. And there we go. So that's your tracker. It. and then I can see my values there. Oh, I haven't got rotate on this. So let's go back into the tracker. I've just got position. So we're going to use both of those trackers for the transforms and then the rotations as well. So now if I go back into settings, we'll see the transform. It's got rotations and translation, which is brilliant. And it's doing that to the image, but I don't, don't worry about that because I don't want to do that. Okay, so now I can grab that data. I can do it in several ways you can link them all sorts of stuff but i'm just going to copy and paste it into the here so i'm going to take this data here and put it onto the root here so i'm going to go into the transform and then i'm going to actually i think if i do control i can does that copy that up? does that just take the one or all of them not sure hang on so it's not control let's try alt dragging that one there we are so that's linked now isn't it no Oh, is this actually updating? Oh, it is updating. Oh, you are updating. All right. Okay, so you're updating, you're updating, you're updating. Okay, so if we go into here now, now that should update. Oh, there you go. My track's kind of moving with it. My eye. There we are. And then let me put my rotation as well. So I'm going to do, I think it's alt. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Alt and grab this little bit on the end. Alt and drag that into this little bit over here. No, let's try. There it is. So that's control. And if you're on a Mac, it'll be something different. Okay, let's go and hide some of these things now. So I don't want to see all that. Okay, so there's my frame. There's my track. So I'm going to just offset these a little bit. I'm going to go back to my source and my wall. I'm just going to keyframe these a little bit. So I'm just moving the lens where it's going to affect. Yeah. 
Okay, still in right. I'm just going to save another key over there. Let's put you down there a little bit. By the end. There we are. Over there. And then the same for the source. Put you over there. So it's sort of staying reasonably inside that area. Okay. So now what we do is we go to our source, which is this inside one. I'm going to go back to spline. I'll hide that little cross in the middle. Um, right mouse button. And then you say duplicate and join. Okay. So this makes a copy of the first curve and puts it exactly on top of the same. It's, it's a duplicate of it, hence the name. And then now if I select the source, well, I'm going to call, I'm going to rename this to destination. Okay, now if I select the destination, I can move that and it will warp it. And because this is all, <laughs> it's ugly, because this is um, uh, tracked from the transform, it, that warpy mirror effectively will follow, follow along with it. Oh, except I've got keys. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So I saved a key here, so I'd probably need to warp you too, wouldn't I? But that's okay, because that's all fun. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> uh, sorry, I like to entertain myself. Okay, so let's move you over here too. I guess I should have. Well, there's lots of ways of doing it. Okay, now there's something else. You can see it's kind of a bit, bit jaggedy here. So I'm going to give that some more um, more points to work with. If I can remember where it is. And let's go to the last frame. There we are. Okay. And... Now, where was that? I think it's in, there we go, yeah, under render. So you're under render, curve resolution, boundary resolution, and preview. So let's make that 10 and then make this one 10. So now you can see there's a lot more points in there. It's a lot higher fidelity. And now, if I go back to my first room, I'm just gonna press Q to hide that, press play. <laughs> now we can look at something pretty extreme. <laughs> All right. So um, there you go. What fun. Uh, hi. So slight update. I found out I was doing something slightly wrong. Well, not wrong, but we can improve this because I, um, my wall, if I move one of these things, you see that it was slightly affecting this stuff behind it. So that's not the hard boundary, that's a soft boundary. So that it'll influence beyond here a little bit. Um, so what you can do is add another kind of a, a spline around that. So I'm just gonna zoom in here. And if I move, it's gonna move this guy. I'm just gonna give him some extreme, but you'll see what happens to my ear. See that, it's kind of like, it's pulling that to two. So if I undo that, and then I just go and I'm going to change the name of this wall. It's actually called a boundary. That's what Newt calls it. So I'm going to change that to boundary. And then I'm going to add another one around the outside, and that's going to be a hard boundary. So I pressed on the little B-spline tool there. So now I don't want it to influence anything outside of this area. And that Bezier is a child of the root, so it'll... It'll move with it, so that's all good. Okay, and then I'm just gonna change the name to hard boundary, because that's what this button is here. And then I click that, so that'll now activate it. And if I go into a different one, oh, come on. There you are, oh, ah, there we are, it's activated. And then do you see what happened then? See, let's unactivate it, see it's, not it's keeping this as it should be so that's what that button does hooray okay so now if i move um this bit here 
you see it's only affecting the pixels inside of here and a little bit here but not beyond the hard boundary so brilliant so now we can make it even freakier but with high quality all right um thanks bye